Forward TV. The world is thinking. My third and final sort of methodological and analytical um, uh, concern, and this you'll see I come from a, uh, as Mike mentioned in his introduction, a, a risk assessment uh, background now, is that this is all a basically a single forecast for the next hundred years. It is non-contingent, it is non-probabilistic. And I find that, frankly, to be very troubling. It may be plausible, it may be a good base case, but it's not the only case. And I'd like to know what the relative probabilities are of two other uh, scenarios. One uh, is that uh, China continues to grow, but it grows perhaps because of the more uh, negative, longer-term trends that Steve and I identified. It grows slower, or it slows down more rapidly uh, than Bert has uh, projected. Steady, relatively steady, but slower growth. Uh, the other uh, contingency or, uh, or uh, uh, scenario would be one where China has much more dramatic cyclical swings in its economy. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, the uh, aggregate growth over time, because of those downturns, cyclical downturns, is also uh, relatively less than Bert, uh, Bert anticipates. I'm leaving out a fourth scenario, which was some sort of catastrophic failure. Maybe we would have to put that into a analysis. But I agree with Bert uh, that those kinds of scenarios are, which uh, Jim Mann used to call oddly a soothing scenario, maybe not for China, certainly, maybe for us. These are relatively unlikely. But I think these other of secular, slower secular rates of growth or dramatic cyclical shifts as the Chinese try to cope with various uh, contradictions in their economy. Uh, I think that would be useful for these long, in fact, essential for these long-term forecasts. Finally, uh, a thought about uh, what uh, Greg Foster uh, had, to, uh, had to say. He makes an absolutely fundamental case about what Americans have to think about and do in their foreign policy. We don't need China to make this case, ladies and gentlemen. These are things we need to do anyway. It doesn't matter whether China grows slowly or rapidly. Uh, we are in a world where there are many Chinas. There are going to be many Chinas, maybe not as big, but we're going to have India. We're going to have other large emerging markets. It is simply naive for us to assume that we are going to have the same relative standing in the world uh, in uh, 20 years as we've had uh, for the last uh, uh, several decades, especially since the, end of the, uh, since the end of the Cold War. We are going to have to do all of the things that, uh, uh, that Greg has mentioned, in my judgment, uh, in order to adjust to this change. I'm always concerned that somehow, unless we bring China into the picture, nobody pays any attention. So it has to be about China or because of China rather than because of the much broader trends uh, that uh, are shaping our world, of which China is an important piece but not, the, uh, but not the only one. And that's why I said there's less of a connection in some ways between Greg's uh, recommendations and Burke's analysis. Greg's recommendations will be important, will be essential, whether or not China grows uh, with the degree of optimism that Burt uh, forecasts. Thanks.